Hey Wizard, so in this video we're going to talk about the heat maps area on tensor charts. This is continuing our series that Sam Sugar asked for on tensor charts videos. And we want to focus on this little heat maps area because it has on it probably my most favorite tool ever out there in cryptocurrency trading. And that's what I'm going to get into first. So stay tuned if you like cryptocurrency trading, you're going to love this. But first, let's roll into it. Okay, so when you're on tensor charts, you can just click on this little heat maps area down here and it presents you with a number of options. I want to start with my ultimate favorite option over here. So I'm, I'm actually going to zoom in just by scrolling my mouse into this chart so you can see what's going on a bit more clearly. Now, normally you'll notice you have this little candlestick icon over here turned on and all you're seeing are candlestick charts. Now, for those of you who have watched previous videos I've done, you'll know what I'm about to do next. Now, I can turn the opacity of a heat map up that shows me volume. Now this looks kind of messy, but it's getting a lot more interesting. I can see kind of what volume was traded at what price. I don't really care about this candlestick coloring in anymore. I want to get rid of that. Ah, now I can see total volume. And if I scroll in even more, I can see the actual amount traded, the amount of Bitcoin traded at that level, but it still looks kind of like my brain has to work it out. And this is the thing I love most about this tool. I'm going to click on this number two over here and it's going to show me the deltas. So it's going to show me the difference between the buys and the sells, the bulls and the bears in terms of volume. So now I'm getting volume and price information. So this is really interesting because up here where price actually went down, I had a ton of buy volume happen at the top here and price didn't go up. Price dropped. So I probably exhausted the order book with buyers over here that it was exhausted price didn't move up anymore it would have been a great indicator that price was going to go down so you can actually have a look at the price movement and the volume movement for context and information about what's happening in the market where are the contradictions happening but wait there's more <laughs> this is so cool by the way if you're not absolutely blown away and excited by this as I am, then I think you're taking for granted how good the tools are in cryptocurrency. Because I can tell you in the stock market to get this information costs a lot of money. I was even looking to develop something like this for crypto wizards. And when I saw tensor charts, I was like, they've already done it. Awesome. It's already here. So now we can actually zoom out and look at some other things going on over here as well. So I'm actually just going to turn the candlestick charts back on. I'm going to turn this volume off for now, just so that there's less noise in what I'm trying to explain. So I want to look at some of the other areas. I'm going to turn the opacity up here and you can see that now all of a sudden I'm getting all this information. It's like, Sean, what, what's, what's going on over here? Well, there's a number of things I can do here. I can change how much information I want filtered out and in so it's not so noisy. But what you need to know is that we're looking at the order book over here. We're actually looking at bids and offers on the order book and we're not just looking at it like now at this point in time, we're looking at it historically. So you're actually getting a historical view of what the order book looked like going backwards against price. So all you have to do is learn how to interpret that into information. So it's very interesting. What we can do is change how it looks as well. So I can click on number two and it's now showing me this sort of order book more in terms of support and resistance levels. And you can see down here, we've got some very strong support happening over here. If you see that price touch those levels previously, it's a very good sign because it means that there wasn't spoofing going on. It's if you see that price came down here and there was like a lot happening, but then it disappeared and price went through. But that level, that line wasn't there anymore. What that means is someone was spoofing. So you can actually see like historically what's happened, what games have been played over here right now. If you ask me, we're just looking at really, really good support at this level. Now, anyone looking just at price would say, yeah, supports over here. But the reality is, I think a lot of people have their orders placed here on the bids. Now, could these be stop losses? I don't know. I haven't really spent much time thinking about it, but it's just useful information because it shows me what is going on with this with the order book and where is the real support and resistance. There is a lot of support right now on Bitcoin. There's far more support, in my opinion, than there is resistance. So I really feel like depending on what the order book would look like if we got up here, there could be a serious price vacuum bringing the price 
back up to what it was before in the 4000s range. Now the next thing I can change over here is the minimum volume. So if there's just so much noise and I want to cut through that, I can scroll down and I can see everything. Now it's more colorful and it's sort of the, the, the thicker the color, the more support maybe. I don't know. I, I just don't like that much noise. I don't think it's that, I don't think it's very necessary. So I'm just going to sort of show just the amount of detail that I really need on the order book. So there's a lot of stuff we can do. We can change what kind of heat map we're looking at. We can turn up the opacity for volume, which in my opinion is the most useful tool on here. And in terms of the minimum volume, we can actually change how much, I'm just going to call it noise. How much noise do we actually want to see or how much info do we actually want to see, depending on whether you think it's noise or info. But this is super cool. I don't know if you agree with me. Put it in the comments what you think. This is an amazing tool. Again, I'm not going to put my affiliate link. I do not want to get paid for promoting this. It's just a great tool. If you like this, if you want more videos like this, or you want more videos on anything, put it in the comments like my friend Sam over here. I really appreciated that. So until the next one, guys, take care and talk soon.